uh, if you can minimize that and uh, hide, yeah, try to hide that, that should be a uh, way to, has that little dot in the top there? Yeah. You could try that off your, off your presentation. Okay. Okay. Round two. Okay, so the next speaker is Hannah Giacom, and she will talk about equivariant and motivic stable homotopies. Thank you. Thomas. It seems that the pointer is not working, um, but I think I just started. You Thank you for that. Uh, you click on with your mouse on. on yeah, the it, no reaction. I'll try now. Oh, there's some debate. Okay. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So the topic of my talk today is equivalent and motivic stable homotopy theory. Let me start with something that is non-equivalent, non-motivic, and non-stable non-homotopy. So the starting point is the category of pointed topological spaces. For algebraic topologists, the most important environment is the homotopy groups of a sphere and uh, sorry of the space X. And it's defined to be, so you look at all maps from the S sphere mapping into a space and you question out some relation called home topic. And visually being home topic is saying that you have two maps and they can be continuously, continuously deformed into each other. Here I include this example, which is the um, first home topic group of the circle. So by definition, you need to look at maps out of S1, that is a circle, and a map out of S1, that is you trying to find in your target space a loop. So up to home topy or up to um, continuous deformation, the only thing that matters is how many rounds you have, how many laps you have. And that's why the answer is the group of integers. So these three examples shows you uh, three representatives of the element one, two, and three in this group. And algebraic topologies, where home topic series, we want to think of two spaces, the same if there is a map between them, which induces equivalence of home topic groups. So that is the definition of a map being a home topic equivalence. This is analogous to, so in chain complexes, we have chain homotopy, we have quasi isomorphism, and to get the derived category, we need to invert the uh, quasi isomorphisms. And here we invert these weak equivalences to get the homotopy category of spaces. So here I add in the first description word, um, homotopy. And now let's do stable. So the motivation to stabilize things uh, is in this uh, Friedenthal's suspension theorem. It says that this sequence of homotopy group map stabilizes. Let's jump to this example to see what this theorem means. So we can take the space X to be uh, S0, the, the two points, uh, degree zero sphere. And the first object, um, so suspension of X will be S1 and suspension two X will be S2. And here is a table of homotopy groups of spheres um, groups that in the same sequence, they will line in a, a, the same line of slope negative one. So for example, if you look at this diagonal, you will see the sequences zero, zero, groups in the sequences zero, zero, Z, and Z to Z to Z to Z, and it stabilizes. And you get the same group and every map will be an isomorphism after this stage. And this stabilized um, phenomena leads to this definition of spectra. So spectra in algebraic topology, this should be sort of as stabilized spaces. They catch the stable information and they're in some sense better to work with compared to topological spaces. They are um, the stable objects. They are the objects of the stable category, the category of spectra. So here we have the stable category, we want to add in homotopy, the description homotopy to that. So we do the similar thing, similar to topological spaces, we can define homotopy groups and using homotopy groups to define weak equivalences and we invert the weak equivalences. So here is a picture which uh, summarizes what I just said. You start with topological spaces and you stabilize to get a stable category and you invert weak equivalences to get the stable homotopy category. So the big question in this category is that we would like to calculate the uh, stable homotopy groups of the sphere. These groups, they tell you, well, they answer questions in other um, 
subjects of mathematics. For example, it tells you they tell you how many smooth structures you have and uh, relates covariant environment problem, age cobordism, et etc. Cetera, et cetera. And the computation, as you can expect, is super, super hard. Uh, mostly, we use uh, tools called spectral sequences to compute it. And here we use, um, especially here, we use atom spectral sequence. And on the next page, on this page, I attach a picture of atom spectral sequence computation of the sphere. This is work by Isaacson Wang Shi. And the point of I put in here is not explaining everything. In this picture, I just want to give some feeling of how complicated this computation is. Is this yeah. the sphere with two points? This is. So it's a spectrum, sphere spectrum, the for, stabilized sphere. For just the two points. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, right. So there are lots of info, lots of data here, lots of lines, dots, and I just want to show you that this is not just some closed form computation. Um, lots of data and lots of things that undetermined. Uh, is that a question? Okay. Um, right. So this is about stable homotopy category and. Now let's do equivalent hemotypic. So equivalent hemotypic, there are two variations or there are two enhancement of the classical stable homotopy category. Equivalent is about adding group actions. And motivic is about you adding some algebra geometric objects or smooth schemes. And I here I color them differently. And in later slides, I will use consistent coloring. Um, so first equivalent, it's about group actions. And an equivalent space, it is a space with a continuous action by a group G, and here G can be a finite group or a compact D group. Examples. So here I attach two very understandable examples. When a group is cyclic group of order two, we have two kinds of circles. So the first circle, it's a not very interesting circle with trivial action. And the second circle is uh, the C2 action is by reflection. And here this notation as sigma so sigma is a sign representation, and if you have the sign representation, you close it up, you will get this circle. Um, in, you, you can see that in this uh, simplest non-trivial example here, we have two kinds of circles, and that's part of the complexity of uh, equivalent theory, because things are not like in the classical theory, uh, integrally graded. So for example, homotopy groups for C2 equivalent uh, homotopy groups in the C2 equivalent theory, they're bi-graded. And you have more representation spheres um, when group is not just C2. Okay, so we do the same procedure. We stabilize and invert weak equivalences to get our equivalent stable homotopy categories. There are lots of, lots of details I'm hiding in this short sentence, but they can be done if you do them correctly. You will get the correct equivalent stable homotopy category. And then motivic. So motivic theory is built uh, in work of Murat Vosky, who was here at the Institute, and it's about um, smooth schemes. So a motivic space, very unfortunately, is not as understandable as the equivalent space. It is a simplicial Nishnevich shift over the category of smooth schemes over the base field K. And I attach them to I also attached two examples, and hopefully they will help. So the first example is something called so these two examples there both circles. The first example is the simplicial circle. So that is every simplicial set, they can be treated as a constant sheaf. So we have the simplicial set as one, and that is a motivic space called the simplicial circle. And the other circle is, um, so every smooth scheme, they can be viewed as a representable sheaf under the Nishinavich topology. So if we take alpha line minus zero, then that scheme is what is called the Tate circle. And the point of I choosing these two examples here is that you can see that motivic spaces, they consist of these two kinds of objects. One is simplicial set, the more topological things, and the other is smooth schemes, more algebra geometric things. So motivic theory is a combination of um, these two worlds. And we do the same thing to get to the motivic stable home topic category. Okay. Now we have these three stable homotopy categories, classical, equivalent, and motivic. Um, so they themselves alone are very helpful. Equivalent theory is used in, for example, Hill Hopkins' Ravenel solution to the Corelli environment problem, and motivic is central in Mubowski's work. Um, the question is, how do they relate each other? From equivalent to classical, it's more or less obvious. You just forget the group action. 
And from motivic to classical, the connection is given by what is called realization factors. And um, so here's what it is. If our base field K admits a complex embedding, then we can take C points and that gives a construction of a functor called Betty realization factor. And the example, the first example is that when my base field K is the complex numbers, I take the K circle and take a look at what the value realization factor maps it to. So that is, you have the complex plane, you pick this original point, and that is equivalent to a sphere, a, a circle. And this is also uh, the reason why this thing is called a Tate circle. Further, we can look at real numbers instead of complex numbers. And here we will still get the same space, a circle, but you can also take into consideration the uh, Galois group action. So this is a C2 action and it acts by reflection. So here we arrive at not just S1, we arrive at a C2 equivalent space, which is S sigma. And in fact, in this case, you can upgrade this steady realization functor to a C2 equivalent functor, to a functor that arrives in the C2 equivalent category. So this square summarizes the example I just talked about. You have these uh, four corners, they are stable home to be categories, and you have the vertical arrows that are given by the realization functors. The horizontal arrows, the bottom one is uh, forget the group action, and the top one is given by base change. And um, here begins the fun part. So what I mean by that is we have all these stable home to be categories, we can consider the computation of tools in them, and we can play around with these things. I prepare four examples of what I mean by playing around with these things. So the first example is that we can consider a classical object and we can try to find or cal calculate the upgrades of this classical object. So the example is J is uh, the notation for the classical image of J spectrum. This is an important object in the classical stable home of theory. It's an approximation to the sphere and it relates the K1 local sphere, which is also an important example in the chromatic theory. And the C2 equivalent analog of that is calculated in work of William Badarama, and he used this homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. And the R motivic version is done in uh, work with Belmont and Isaacson. We use effective slice spectral sequences. So the uh, one thing I want to point you to here is that when using completely different computational tools, and these uh, tools, their construction, these two spectral sequences, their construction uses some special structure in the equivalent and in the motivic category, so they cannot be easily translated. And the point I want to make here is that um, that gives you some more treatment of the classical object. You can just lift them to uh, these different categories and use your tech, uh, motivic or equivalent technologies, and then you forget them to get more information of a classical object. So that's example one. And example two concerns um, some connections of different computational tools. So in work with um, Dominic Cover and JD Quickly, we proved that uh, if a motivic spectrum satisfies some condition called slicable, then you can build such a square of spectral sequences. And using this uh, square, you can uh, discuss examples, motivic spectrum, and that accounts for certain differentials in the row box size spectral sequence. It also has application in the C2 regular size spectral sequences. And the third example shows some interaction between the motivic and the C2 equivalent. So I calculated this thing called the uh, connective C2 equivalent K series spectrum, and the computational tool I constructed to calculate this thing comes from motivic. So that's why I color this thing with red, even though the object is C2 equivalent. And it turns out that this motivic tool, it uh, works more efficiently than a purely C2 equivalent tool. So it gives much simpler computation compared to the C2 atom spectral sequence computation. And so far, the three examples I talk about, they more or less concerns that square. So we only have R, C, and C2. And of course, you want to ask a question, what about general base field? And in work with Tom Bachman, Bo Zhong Wai, and Zhou Shi, we consider general base field when K is some um, general base field. We show that you can put a T structure on the motivic category such that its heart can be identified with MU2 star MU co-modules. And MU is uh, the notation for the co spectrum. And you can also upgrade this result to a uh, equivalent result. Uh, if you take into consideration the Galois group, then uh, the heart, you can put another T structure, it's hard can be identified with this object. And here, this underlying notation is uh, a structure called Mackey functor. It's a motivic, it's an equivalent analog of a big groups. 
Um, so this also works for positive characteristics. You only need to invert that number. And we care about this because these T structures leads to more computational applications in general base field. Um, okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Questions? Sorry, what was the C next to the heart? So C is uh, so we call this child T structure. Oh, that's the child name. That's the name of the T structure. Yeah, yeah. And also similar for that W comma. So are these T structures very destructive? Like there are lots of things that are infinitely connected or infinitely co-connected with respect to them. Uh, there are infinite connected things. Oh, so the interesting character that uh, the case when we had R that uh, the circle with the evolution corresponded to the conjugation of complex numbers in some way. And then, uh, so, do we then always have kind of fixed point of unity so that we don't have that one on S1 when one is one? one. Are you talking about the, the, the C triangular sphere? Yeah. Um, so actually, uh, if you're thinking about this slide, um, actually, so uh, what I did not put in the slides is that we always want a base point. Okay. And if it's n quarter, then. Okay. Mm. okay. So. Let's swing off the